We're back. That was Hollow off of the debut album Haunted by Hopeless Ghosts. And we have Kieran here in the studio with us tonight. Um, ready to answer some questions? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Hopeless Ghosts, you were saying, has been essentially a couple year project for you. Yeah. Correct. Um, so if you want to walk the listeners through kind of what that, what that was like for you, because it's almost a solo project, aside from the drums, right? So. Yeah, well, uh, I had a lot of trouble over the years with other bands and trying to get a band together, really mm -hmm. focusing on getting the sound I wanted and getting that across to people. Mm -hmm. So um, I decided to do it all myself to make sure I could kind of get that sound to show people rather than kind of just tell them and hope that they get it. Mm -hmm. So it started a couple years ago with me writing a bunch of songs and kind of demoing them out. And then in the fall of 2017, I, I hired a session drummer to really get the album started. Is he from around here? He, he's, um, he's from Orangeville, Ontario. Okay. So yep. uh, he, his name is Chuck Keeping. He's a really great drummer. He drums for the band Big Wreck. Uh, he's a family friend of ours. And it was really nice to actually get to sit down with him. Amazing drummer, amazing guy. So I was happy to have him on the album. Yeah. And I guess being kind of solo too, you get to like handpick and choose who you want for yeah. you to be, right? So. Uh, I wanted to do the album by myself, but I knew I would run into the problem with drums just because I'm, I'm not a, a drummer myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had programmed them and, and done them out first, and mm -hmm. written them, and then worked with him to kind of get the sound that I was going for. Okay, and do you find that it changed a little bit because he was a drummer compared to what you had anticipated? Yeah. Um, he, he was really good for that, actually, kind of taking even just like little dis uh, descriptions that I had given him and the little bit of program drums that I, I, I had mm -hmm. for him and turning that into what sounded really good for the type of music I had. And luckily he had the demos to listen to and stuff. That's cool. So did you have something set up in terms of a time frame for yourself going into it? I originally, uh, I, I wanted to keep this album focused around the theme of fall. So I, I wrote the songs um, in the fall of 2016 and 17 and then started recording in the fall of 2017 and kind of put it on hold for a little while and then finished them again in the fall of 2018. I had originally planned to release it for, for a Halloween, yeah. but I, I felt like it was, it was just not going to be quite where I wanted it yet, so yeah. I decided to push it back a few months. Okay, and out of curiosity, what was that like finishing, like what needed to be met to get to that? Uh, well, I, the last thing I recorded really was vocals, and mm -hmm. um, when I was recording them back in October, I, I got really sick for a little while, okay. so I, I I actually did keep some of the, the sick tracks on the album, even, yeah. even like Hollow, that, that song. I'm, yeah. I'm a little raspy in it, yeah. but I felt like for some of the songs that I did, it worked really well to yeah. get the emotion across. Whereas other songs, I needed to take some time, let my throat and my voice relax, and then re-record them. So yeah. that and mixing the album, mastering it, and getting everything ready for a release, especially with all the online platforms today. Mm -hmm. So. That was a big part of it too. Yeah. Um, so you do producing and mixing for other projects, correct? Yes. Okay. So how was it? Did you find that there was a big difference between doing somebody else's work and then having your own personal stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, with having your own personal stuff, especially doing most of it at home and in, in my own studio, it, mm. you kind of have too much time, you know. So. <laughs> You, you want everything to be good, but then you realize, you know, I wouldn't spend this much time just working on this if it was someone someone yeah. else paying me to do it, oh, right? Sure. So it, it's, uh, it's a little different. Also, people, when, I, when I'm working with someone else, have so much input. Mm -hmm. And whereas when it's really just yourself, you can only bounce ideas off of yourself and it can only go so far. So it's really challenging to do everything alone. Yeah. Um, and did you... Was there specific things that like motivated you in those moments? Yeah, um, especially with the writing process, my, mm -hmm. my partner Alexi was really big on, mm -hmm. on helping me get the ideas that I was trying to convey across and, and really help me dig deep to say what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, for the guitars and, and recording all the instruments, it was, it was really just waking up and, and doing it every day. Yeah. And, doing it over and over again until we kind of got it right and was finally happy with it. Okay. Uh, was there a lot of repetition? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, with any recording, you, yeah. you end up sitting there for like a day listening to the same four seconds over and over yeah. again, so yeah. lots of that. That's fair. Uh, so going back, you said you were sick. Were you, did you keep the, the sick track for sleep? 
because you yes, have such an incredible scream in there. And I remember going, like, listening through it, and I was like, ah, the only word that came out of my mouth or the only thing that I could think of was like, holy shit, Kieran, <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. Well, thank you. And that entire, like, that's my favorite on the album. Oh. Like, it's absolutely incredible, because you have samples, and if you've listened to the show, you know that the first of all absolutely adores samples on tracks. Awesome. Where did you pull those from? Um, so there's a website that I, I looked up that had a bunch of horror movies, old horror movies yeah. that have now become public domain because okay. they're copyright they're so inspired. Old, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so these are movies from like the 1930s and mm -hmm. through to the 1950s, really. Um, the original like Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, things like that. Yeah. So I, I used some samples from a lot of the old horror movies that really inspired me as a kid to to do stuff like music and writing and art. So mm -hmm. I, I wanted to pay a little tribute to that. Yeah, so that comes up. Um, so I'm actually, you okay with the play? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. I'm going to pull that up and uh, folks, stick around. We got more for you. But this is Sleep by Hopeless Ghosts off of Haunted. So talk to me why Hopeless Ghosts? Um, like why, why the band name? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've just always been really inspired by a lot of Halloween kind of stuff mm -hmm. and, and a lot of my art and writing mm -hmm. and, and music. So. I wanted something that would have a good imagery to it. Okay. So I, I can't really pick where I got the name from. I've yeah. had it for a couple of years now, okay. but I, I just really like the idea of having a ghost as an image for the album. Yeah, and the album art is absolutely incredible. Yeah. I love, I love it. Um, it's at once. Like it obviously plays on your love of Halloween, but it's also, it's the nostalgic almost. Like looking at it, you're just like, oh yeah, of course. Like everybody at one point has either like aspired to dress up as or has has been, you know? Yeah, yeah it's really, it's really neat. Uh, who's on the front? Uh, <laughs> so that, that is um, myself and my friend Kevin actually. Amazing. Uh, Alexi took the photograph, we went, we went down to the cemetery for, for a day and uh, Dressed up like ghosts. You guys so. play around. Did anybody stop you? No, anybody no. Okay. Uh, luckily not. So, haunted. Do you believe in paranormal? In the paranormal? I'm, I always <laughs> love the interest in that stuff, but okay. I haven't been sure if I believe in it myself. It, okay. it's, really, if you say yes to it, it's opening yeah. up a whole bunch <laughs> yeah. of stuff, right? It's like playing with Ouija. I refuse. Like, nobody it's, plays with that. Yeah. Like, you're opening a door. It, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I would be like, oh, I'm, I'm not saying that I necessarily believe in the, the Ouija boards, but I wouldn't want to do it myself. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. that's true. And there's um, multiple uh, definitions to haunted yeah. as well, right? So you're looking at like bored or restless, or you're looking at somebody who's been um, like the apparition of spirits, or in, in yours, in any read-up that you do, or even listening to the lyrics, you're kind of seeing that it comes from an emotional nature, yes. right? Correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, that's <laughs> okay. exactly it. Um, yeah. for, for this album, Haunted was really focusing on the things that kind of linger, the things that, you know, if you if you don't really deal with them, they'll come up all the stuff from the past and mm -hmm. haunt you later. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a big theme in my writing for this album, was being able to say all the stuff that has bothered me for some time now, and mm -hmm. say all the things that I never got to say when I was younger, and um, kind of point out all the things that still today were lingering around. Mm -hmm. Um, is do you find like because the entire album sort of like tells a story, yeah. right? Um, so do you find it like runs parallel to your own that you're kind of putting into this, or is it? Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of it. Like I, I do use the metaphors of, of ghosts and monsters a lot throughout the album, mm -hmm. but a lot of it just draws on personal experiences that are true. Um, there, there's even a little bit of paranormal in there in yeah. one of the songs. Um, from my own experiences, so mm -hmm. yeah, but it's, it's cool to be able to write it as an album that had a start to finish, kind of told the story. Do you, so now that it's been released, you were, went off air, we were kind of talking about the fact that it's like, it's great to have it out there. Do you feel like it's been like a chapter closed, like finished? Um, yes, but I, I feel like it's actually more like just beginning. Oh, I mean, that's cool. So, so uh, I've had a, a lot of, um, great appreciation for the album from my family and friends and, mm -hmm. and, and people who have listened to it over the past week now and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes. Mm -hmm. When I first finished the album, yeah, it definitely felt like I, a chapter closed, like I was like, oh, I'm done with it, I'm finally, finally done, but then 
once it was out and started to pick up, I realized, like, no, this is just the beginning, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I got a whole other aspect there. Yeah, yeah. and um, going forward, I, I'm really excited to see where the band goes. Mm -hmm. um, so, we kind of spoke a little bit previously, but do you have plans in terms of, like, playing shows? Or? Yeah. yeah. So, right now, uh, I'm in the process of recruiting bandmates, mm -hmm. you know, I, I started this as a one-man band yeah. and one of the purposes I wanted to do the album solo was to get the sound I wanted and then show people so that they would be willing to join something that had a solid sound to it already. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm looking for people, uh, I want to start rehearsing and hopefully play shows come the late spring, early summer once once the weather gets a little better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going out there in treacherous, treacherous yeah. winter. Um, cool, so do you have inspirations like we like to ask artists essentially to, to bring in a playlist and you brought in a plethora of tunes but is there something that you would love to play right off the bat yeah um my my favorite band as, as many people who know me know is the used yeah. uh they've been a huge inspiration to mm -hmm. me personally mm -hmm. and musically throughout my my entire life and uh I, th I feel like that's a good place to start off for the first show like this. If you're just tuning in, we have Kieran here from Hopeless Ghost's uh, debut album. Just dropped on the third. Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Must feel great. Uh, that was Jimmy World Alpha Blade American Sweetness, which is a great throwback for me. But this is from your inspiration, so do you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, I, I, for this playlist I uploaded a bunch of songs um, and bands that have not only inspired me musically, but just personally over mm -hmm. the years. And Jimmy World's just one of those bands that I've listened to since I was a little kid, you know, yeah. probably like eight or nine years old when that album came out. Yeah. Actually, I think it's like 2001. So yeah, I was like nine. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that and The Used, they're both really big bands. Um, their musical style has always kind of grown with me, too, mm -hmm. I found. So even as I grew up and my style and influences kind of changed more, they, those bands really stuck with me over the years and kind of matured at the same time. Yeah, um, out of curiosity, because they have really strong vocals, did you pull your vocal inspiration from there? Or were there other? A little, a little bit, especially with um, more like the harsher screaming vocals yeah. on on my album. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely drew inspiration from a lot of bands I, like The Used and for the clean vocals I like that more prettier kind of sound to it. So yeah. so Jimmy World, I mean Jim Jim Atkins has a beautiful voice. Yeah, that's a melodic <laughs> melodic man. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there another band that sort of like you would take away from a lot in terms of musicality or instrumentation? Yeah, um, uh, Citizen is like a um, uh, I guess like a kind of post-hardcore kind of band. Okay. <clears throat> Them and Balance and Composure, really big musical influences for me. Their f first two albums from both those bands are, are great. Um, I, I also really liked uh, My Chemical Romance growing up, from yeah. first to last, <laughs> things like things like that, the Super classics. Yeah. Um, even even things like uh, you know Thursday, Thrice, Circus Survive. These are all such great, like, <laughs> name dropping things. Yeah. Definitely played a lot of my teens. Um, I so, kind of got stuck in those years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad life to live. Um, so, tell our listeners, because we're kind of all over the map in terms of alternative Franco Ontario music and, like, everywhere. Uh, so, you're looking at, like, folk roots, and you have a secret song on your album, which I absolutely love, yes. where you're playing ukulele? Yes. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Um, do, you, do you listen to folk? Like, where did that come from? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not exactly sure. It was kind of, I, I was going for the kind of sound that picture like a drive-in, you know how they have the intermission commercial of <laughs> like dancing hot dogs. That's exactly, stuff. as soon as you said drive-in intermission, I'm like, oh, the hot dog and the popcorn. Yeah, sure. yeah, that, that's, that's the kind of sound, and it, it, it has like that like vinyl distortion sound to it too, yeah. really old-timey kind of, kind of vibe to it, and uh, I just wrote it to be really goofy. It was um, a way to end off like an album that kind of ends on a darker note yeah. to kind of bring it back up and show people that, yeah, even though I, I've written this pretty dark and emotional album, it's mm -hmm. still still me and there's still a bright, goofy side yeah. to it. So. <laughs> um, speaking of which, so it's a, it's a pretty, it's a heavier album, mm -hmm. I would say, and even on the topics that you're, you're touching, did you find that it took anything out of you to write or was it more of a release? Uh, 
definitely took a lot out of me just because yeah. it, it was a struggle to find the right words to say, yeah. you know, and find a way that says them in my, my own way, but also a way that people can relate to each other without sounding too cliche or too overdone. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, it was a good release. It was very therapeutic to be able to finally say all these things and, and talk about my struggles and, and my problems in, in a way that was emotional, but at the same time, really got it out. You know, when you're when you're singing your heart out and screaming in the closet, it's, <laughs> it's a good way to release and, and let go. So um, it felt felt really good to to get this out.